Howdy folks, greetings and welcome. Today, it's the American election. What's my thoughts? Now, I'll be honest, I, I don't get too heavy into uh, American politics for a couple of reasons. I mean, there's only so much information you can take on, right? I mainly keep my ear to the ground on British politics. Uh, but the other reason is that I, I just find this, there's so much limited power that the American president has. You know, when you look at the lobbying laws, we know how much power big business have in America. Um, when you look at the fundamental issues that have been plaguing America over the last 30, 40 years, you know, I'm talking about healthcare, I'm talking about the, the dire poverty in inner cities, in uh, the drug war, uh, the endless arguments about abortion and, and gun laws. You know, no president has ever really been able to actually make any significant change in these areas. You know, these are the areas that are really plaguing America. Uh, so I kind of find the presidential election is more damage limitation. It's, it's more which one of these candidates is, is going to least F up the country. <laughs> and there's an argument for a certain amount of that in this country, but I think even more so in, in America. Uh, so, you know, this is how I feel about American politics. But, you know, I'll, I'll give my opinion. So Kamala Harris... Uh, you know, I kind of feel she's just going to be carrying on the same policies as Biden, really. I don't think there's going to be too much um, deviation from that. Uh, I do like the fact that she's kind of ignoring this culture war stuff. Whenever she gets asked about it in interviews, she brushes it off. She's more interested in talking about policy. Uh, even the fact that she's a female. Obviously, this would be an absolutely momentous occasion for America if she gets voted in the first female president. But she's not putting it forefront. She's not using it. Uh, to her advantage. She's staying clear of that stuff and just sticking to policy, uh, which I really like. But yeah, she, I mean, she'll just carry on the same policies from Biden, really, won't she? And then <laughs> he got Trump. <laughs> now, I'll be honest, I don't want to talk about the crazy things he says, the misogyny. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of bored of all this stuff. People have talked about this for hours and hours on end. I'm more interested in what will the guy do if he comes in for a second term. What are his policies? Now, I feel that his policies are basically just shaped on the reason that he wants to be president in the first place. He wants to be president to massage his own ego. We know this. It's the same as Farage in this country. He wants power. He wants influence. He wants respect. And most importantly, he wants to be popular. The same as his mate Musk. That's what he cares about. I don't think he could ever get those sort of things in the business world that he was in before. I don't think he's a good enough businessman to be able to get that. But he can get that as president for a second term of the United States. And um, this is what shapes his policy. Uh, I, I kind of get a little bit frustrated when people call Trump stupid. And I, I think that's so wrong. I think he's a very intelligent man at what he is good at and he's very good at getting the right people to vote for him we've all seen that interview from years and years ago when he said you know before he had any inclination of trying to become president that if he ever did you know he'd run as a republican because he can talk to empty-headed fox <laughs> fox news followers and this is what he's done you know he's said the right things to the right people in order to get elected, to get any sniff of being near that presidency for the first time and the second time here as well. And that's what shapes his policy. Examples being uh, trade sanctions on China. This, this is a big one, isn't it? I'm gonna put a thousand percent trade sanctions on China because that's what he needs to show to the people that wanna vote for him, that he's powerful against China, that he's standing up for China. You know, those people that are going to vote for him won't look actually look into the implications of what that actually means if you put trade sanctions on China. They don't won't research and find out that actually it's American businesses that are footing the bill for that. China is still getting paid, uh, but American businesses uh, will be hit with the bill. <laughs> that, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. The message is clear. People won't look into that, but the message of being strong and standing up against China could get him elected. The other big one is immigration, of course. You know, he said that he's going to deport thousands and thousands of illegal immigrants. Again, people are not actually going to look into what the impl implications of that would be. The fact that a lot of American infrastructure is, is, is built up with illegal immigration workers. You know, suddenly you take those workers away, 
you need to replace them somehow or the infrastructure is going to fail and fall apart but again it doesn't matter he just needs the people that are going to vote for him to see him being strong on immigration we had this the first time round with the bloody wall majority of illegal immigration is people outstaying their visas is people being smuggled in it's actually a very small about amount that physically cross the border because it's still very difficult to do but it's a big symbol for the people that he needs to see that he's being strong on immigration i'm going to build a wall powerful messages people won't look into the ins and outs of the conversation and uh you know this is the big problem and this is what forms his policy uh, he, he all he cares about is becoming in power. He doesn't care what policies he's put forward. He's, he's not there to actually make life better for the American people. Uh, he just wants the power, the prestige, and the respect that comes with being uh, uh, president. Now, of course, we'll end. I mean, the big one is Ukraine, isn't it? I mean, this is why I'm so anxious about this election. This is why I'm so scared. As a European, um, I'm scared of the implications of Trump. Uh, being president on Ukraine. I understand why Americans would be uh, a little bit apprehensive of spending so much money on a foreign war thousands of miles away. You know, I, I do get that. I think a lot of the figures are massively inflated. I believe when he was on the Joe Rogan podcast, Trump was floating figures in the 300 billion mark that they're sending over to Ukraine, uh, which is just absolutely insane. I mean, that's got essence of the Brexit bus, is not it? 350 million to the NHS. You know, these figures are so badly inflated. Um, you know, they're not taking into consideration so many things when they come up with that figure there. No, where? Okay. Let me get out of the way of this police car. I'm trying my best, mate. I'm really struggling. It's these buses that are causing the problem. Bear with me, folks. Okay. I got out of that guy's way the best I can. <laughs> well, the thing is now, I'm stuck right up behind this bus and I can't actually get out. I can reverse a little bit here. Bear with me, folks. This is what happens when I do these videos. I have to uh, concentrate sometimes on what I'm actually doing. All right, let's get around these buses get past this bmw okay hey folks so i've pulled over now i kind of lost my train of thought after that police car started coming up behind me <laughs> but where was i i was at ukraine wasn't i i was at the uh, 300 billion uh, inflated figure that's being thrown around of how much america are spending in ukraine now i think there's a few things that americans need to bear in mind like i said you know i do understand people being apprehensive at spending money on a foreign war thousands of miles away but i think there's a few things to consider when you think about this 300 billion uh, figure that keeps getting floated around by trump one the weapons that are sent a lot of the weapons that are sent over there are old weapons that are going to get decommissioned anyway the way the military contracts work over there they have to keep producing this stuff and uh, renewing the contracts, so it's a lot of old weapons anyway. Uh, the other thing to take in consideration is freezed Russian assets, which contributes a lot to this. Uh, I know their laws are different in America. I know we're struggling with that a little bit in this country. Uh, we're able to send interest, the interest that we earn from freezed Russian assets, but we can't actually physically sell off all those russian assets even though they're in this country i don't know i don't know the the ins and outs um but that's one thing to consider uh, but the biggest argument um about funding ukraine is the fact that if we live in a world where putin takes over ukraine every country is going to have to up their military spending anyway uh you know it's almost like you, you might as well spend it now because uh, you're going to have to spend it in a world where Russia just takes European countries at will. Every country is going to have to up their military spending. And, and this is the biggest this is the biggest issue for me with a Trump presidency. This is what scares me the most. I can't live in a world uh, where Putin is just picking up European countries as they please. Uh, you know, Trump says things about he just wants to stop the killing. And, you know, I get that. It's awful. It's awful. I, I don't think enough people talk about the Russian lives that are lost as well as the Ukrainian ones. You know, these are Russians with families, with kids that have been brainwashed into this war and forced to go onto this war. You know, it's, it's horrendous. No one wants to see this killing. The amount of war that we have in the world right now is horrible. 
Israel, Palestine, Sudan. No one talks about Sudan, you know. And uh, that's his big push. He just wants to stop the killing. But, you know, we can't, Ukrainians have the right to be able to keep their country and not have it seized by Putin. We have to help out there. We can't have a world where Putin is just snatching whatever European countries he wants. But anyway, I could, I could do a whole video on the Ukraine war as it is. But that's what scares me the most about Trump. And I guess we'll see tomorrow. And I'll probably put out a video with my reaction. Uh, give me your thoughts, folks, please. Let me know in the comments. Are you scared? Are you apprehensive? Uh, let me know. And if you like the video, click a like. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe up top. There'll be another video. Check that out as well. Till next time. Take care. What's going on there? Oh, Jesus Christ. Some craziness going on there. Fucking hell. <laughs> Someone's been cheating and had their stuff thrown out of the house. Anyway, regardless, what was I saying?